Hello everybody. Today we're going to go over how we reverse engineer an e-bike to create one of our custom controller kits. Let's do it. So here's how we'll structure this video. This isn't going to be a comprehensive tutorial on an entire process. If you're going to reverse engineer an e-bike, you got to do some of the homework on your own. Instead, we'll give you insight and an overview of the process that we use and it'll be up to you, the viewer, to figure out how to use it for your own application. By way of introduction, we'll first go over what our process is and why we use it. We don't want to engineer an entire e-bike from the ground up, so this is what we think is an elegant solution. Then we'll go over the two interconnected steps that we use to create our system. First, we map out the system that we're working with, and then we assign meaning to each pin. We'll do an example of each to help illustrate them, but our process is literally a rinse and repeat of both of these steps. And lastly, we'll get to see the end result. That one is pretty self-explanatory. Okay. So the bike we're using for this demo today is an Aerial Rider X-Class. I couldn't find a picture of the 48 volt version, but we're using the 48 volt version, not the 52 volt version. It's older, it's in our shop, it doesn't work right now. E-bikes generally all have the same number of parts. You have a controller, a battery, and a display, and you also have lights. You also have some inputs, such as two brake inputs, a throttle, and a cadence sensor or a torque sensor. So look at the different bike layouts. If we wired everything straight to the controller versus if we plugged the controller into the stock wire harness that has a bunch of splits and joins everywhere made from the factory. In as many cases as possible, our controller kits are gonna plug into a stock wire harness. So it's easy for you to replace and it's easy for us to isolate issues. Besides some bike tools and your controller, the only thing you really need is a multimeter and a little bit of cleverness. So you can do it on the bike, but we've removed the controller and the wire harness, so we can do it on a flat surface. This just makes it a little easier. The wire harness is taped down so that it's easy to manipulate without moving around too much. And the layouts of each pin in each connector is drawn out and labeled. This is an investment in organization so that later it's easy to refer back to all the work we just did. What we're first going to do is check continuity to identify which pins lead where. So that's step one of creating a map of the harness. We know which pin goes where, now we need to know which pin does what. So we're gonna use the throttle as an example. Here's our throttle. Right now, all we know is the common ground was common across the other connectors. So that one's for sure. For the other two pins that a throttle uses, we're just gonna guess. We're gonna guess that that one is our plus five volts, and we're gonna guess that the other one is our signal. Connect our multimeter to common ground. And what we hope to see is when we turn this throttle, we go between zero and five volts. And when we do that, nothing's happening. So what that means is we got the pins wrong. So we'll just switch them real quick. Okay, make sure nothing's touching again. And now let's look at our multimeter. When we twist the throttle, we're actually getting a throttle reading. So this is the expected behavior of our throttle. So now we know this pin is our plus five. This pin is our signal. And that's it. We're just gonna write it down. So it only took us a few minutes to figure out our throttle pins. We've laid them out here. We're gonna continue making the map for all of these other connectors. And then we know exactly which pin we need to send into this connector for the new controller. And eventually what we'll end up with is something that looks like this. This is a portion of our production harness. These are the stock connectors connected into this JST. And this JST is actually what connects into our controller. So now we have a direct line from our controller into the stock connectors. And we don't have to worry about anything else. This is our harness. One last note on proprietary communications. We don't need to hack into any of this proprietary stuff. There are a lot of people who are getting into the weeds of sniffing can lines and stuff like that. Our system only needs the controller to talk to the display. Well, we own both of these communications. So what we're doing is we're taking the stock harness and we're treating it just as wires. Our controller plugs into the harness connector, our display plugs into the display connector, and we just need to make sure that this wire goes to the right wire in the controller. We're replacing communications. There's no need to hack anything. So that's it. This is our process of plugging into a stock bike with new brains.
Um, let us know if you have any questions or comments and go build your e-bikes. <laughs>